we'll go for derivation now that is electric field due to point charge electric field due to point charge at a point so at one point we have to find out what is the electric field due to point charge see here i have taken up two points one is o and the other one is p at point o let me place a charge called as q okay this q is a source charge now. source charge means what it will be producing electric field here the electric field will be due to this charge okay so at point o i have placed a charge called as q and i will consider one more point called as p which is at a distance r from o it is at a distance r from o okay so we have to determine what is the electric field at this point p due to the point charge q which is placed at o this is the derivation so the main intention or the main aim of the derivation is to find out electric field at a point p due to the charge at point o so the point at which we want to determine the electric field is at a distance r from that source charge from that point charge okay fine see since this is a positive charge what should be the direction of the electric field as previously we have discussed electric field will be away from the positive charge and towards the negative charge that's why this is a positive charge hence electric field at this point should be away from that charge it means it will be in this direction this is the direction of electric field away from the charge it should not be towards okay well we have to determine this electric field now fine so the electric field has to be determined okay let us say that consider consider a point charge q consider a point charge q placed placed at point placed at point o okay let let a test charge let a test charge q not be placed be placed at a point o sorry at a point p at a distance at a distance r from r from o okay so at a distance r from o at point p we are going to place a test charge called as q okay initially we have considered a source charge q due to which there will be electric field in this direction and at a distance r from o at point p we are placing a test charge q see this charge q not will be experiencing a force due to the source charge this is test charge okay q not is the test charge so this test charge q not will be experiencing a force due to the charge q because there are two charges now if there are two charges there will be a force of attraction or repulsion acting in between them by coulomb's law we know that since both are positive there will be a repulsive force so we'll write the expression for that force now okay so we'll write force experienced by force experienced by force experienced by the test charge q not by q is given by is given by f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught by coulomb's law i'm writing this q into q naught okay which are the two charges q and q naught are the two charges so q into q naught what is the distance between them r square is the distance between them okay in the vector notation we can write it like this vector f is equal to cap vector r okay this unit vector where 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 cap r is the unit vector unit vector along the direction of electric field along the direction of electric field okay so this is the unit vector well we have written the force between the two charges now q and q naught next by definition of electric field by definition of electric field by definition of electric field we know that we know that e will be equal to f by q naught as well electric field means we define it as electric force experienced per unit positive test charge at that point that's why i'm using the definition well so e is equal to f divided by q naught well e will be equal to what is the value of f now value of f is i will write this 1 by q naught as it is here let this be 1 by q naught as it is now i will write the expression for f expression for f is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q into q naught divided by r square into r cap 
Sir? So here Q0 and Q0 will get cancelled. What will be the field now? Electric field, it will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by R square into R cap. Yes or no? Okay, then the magnitude, magnitude of the electric field, magnitude of the electric field is E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by R square. So this is the expression for electric field due to a point charge called as Q. Till now we have used a formula called as force between two charges Q1 and Q2. We used to write it as F is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. See that is the formula for the force between two point charges. Clearly remember the difference between the two expressions, further you will get confused. So the force between two point charges is given by F is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. There will be two charges Q1 into Q2. Electric field due to a point charge will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square. Here it will not get Q1 into Q2. Please don't get confused. Okay. Electric field means E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square. Force means 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. Okay. See, here we have written the expression called as E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square. E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square means it is electric field. Expression for electric field due to the charge Q. Due to the charge Q at a distance R from the Q. It means if I take a charge Q here, if this is a charge Q, then any in any direction, wherever you want, at a distance R, if I take a point, see this is the distance R, and at this point I want to know what is the electric field. Okay, so this by this charge Q, how much is the electric field at this point? So that electric field here at this point will be E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught due to which charge this electric field is? It is due to Q. At how much distance it is? At distance R. This is what we should write it as R square. What is the direction of electric field? It will be in this direction. If it is positive, it will be away. If it is negative, it will be towards. So E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square is the expression for electric field due to the charge Q at a distance R from the charge Q. Okay, so this is the expression for electric field due to a point charge at a point. Okay, see, next we'll go for another derivation called as principle of superposition of electric field. See, principle of superposition, we have discussed it in electric force also. That was principle of superposition of electric forces. This is principle of superposition of electric field. Okay, we already discussed principle of superposition in force also. Now we are discussing principle of superposition in electric field. So the statement of principle of superposition of electric field is electric field at a point due to a group of charges. Electric field at a point due to a group of charges is equal to the vector sum of is equal to the vector sum of electric field at that point is equal to the vector sum of electric field at that point due to individual charges due to individual charges assuming all other charges are absent. Okay, so this is the statement of principle of superposition of electric field. So what is the meaning of principle of superposition of electric field is, if I consider a point P here, see this is a space now, a vacuum and in that vacuum I have considered a point P. There is no charge placed at this point P. There is, this is a location, just it is a location, there is no charge at this point. Okay, next we will take two more charges now, one is plus Q1 and another one is plus Q2. So there are two charges Q1 and Q2. See charge Q1 is placed at a distance R1 from the origin and charge Q2 is placed at a distance R2 from the origin. Due to these two charges, this is a group of charges now, there are two charges. Okay. So due to these two charges, how much electric field will be at the point B? That we have to determine by this principle of superposition. Okay. So we have to find out what is the electric field at point B due to these two charges. Okay, and according to the principle of superposition, we know that electric field at a point due to a group of charges will be equal to vector sum of electric field due to individual charges. It means at point P, there will be electric field due to Q1, there will be electric field due to Q2. If there was one more charge, then also there will be one more electric field due to that third charge. Okay, now we are having only two charges, Q1 and Q2. How many charges will be there? Those many electric fields will be there at that point. There are two charges now. Therefore, by Q1 there will be one electric field at point B and by Q2 there will be one electric field at that point B. If there was one more charge Q3, then there will be one more electric field at point B due to Q3. But now we are taking only two charges. 
Okay. So at point B, there will be two electric fields. One is due to charge plus Q1, another one is due to charge plus Q2. Okay, we'll mark the directions now. Due to the charge plus Q1, the electric field at point B will be in this direction. I will name it as E1. Due to charge plus Q2, there will be electric field at point B in this direction. I will name it as E2. So we got to know there are two electric fields at the point P now. Okay. Then what will be the net electric field at point P? According to principle of superposition, it will be vector sum of all the electric fields due to individual charges. And remember one more thing. Electric field E1 by charge Q1 at point P will not be affected by the presence of Q2. And electric field due to charge Q2 at the point P E2 will not be affected by the charge Q1. So all the electric fields are individual, they will not get affected by the presence of other charges. That's why we have written here, assuming all other charges are absent. It means the presence of Q1 is not affected by Q2 and the presence of Q2 is not affected by Q1. It means the electric fields of these two are not affected by the presence of other charges. Okay, the electric field of Q1 E1 is not affected by the presence of Q2. The electric field of charge Q2 E2 is not affected by the presence of first charge Q1. Okay, so we got to know at point P there are two electric fields now E1 and E2. They are acting in different directions. So what will be the net electric field at point P? By principle of superposition, it will be the vector sum of the electric fields present at that point. Okay, vector sum of electric fields present at that point. Okay, so we'll continue. Consider, <coughs> consider. two point charges consider two point charges q1 and q2 having having position vectors having position vectors r1 and r2 respectively r1 and r2 respectively <coughs> okay next See, let the distance between Q1 and P be taken as R1P. Okay. And let the distance between Q2 and P be taken as R2P. Distance and right. Okay. What are these? These are unit vectors. Sorry. These are position vectors. Position vector means the vector which represents the position of any point from the origin with respect to origin. So R1 is the position vector of Q1 and R2 is the position vector of Q2. That's why I write as respectively. Okay, so we have taken two charges Q1 and Q2 having position vectors R1 and R2 respectively. Next, what we have to do? We have to determine the electric field at the point P. So the electric field, the electric field has to be has to be determined. The electric field has to be determined at point P. At point P. Okay. So at point P, we have to determine the electric field. At point P, we have to determine the electric field due to Q1 and Q2. Okay. Well, so here we will use principle of superposition. By principle of, by principle of superposition. By principle of superposition. Okay. So the electric field at point P will be equal to vector sum of electric fields at that point vector sum of electric fields at that point so this is the statement of principle of superposition okay. so the first electric field is due to charge q1 i will write it as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught we know that electric field due to a point charge is given by e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by r square this is the expression for electric field that's why e1 means it will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 this is e1 means it is electric field due to q1 Okay, at what point at point P? What is the distance of that point from Q1? See, distance of the point P from Q1 is R1P. We are writing the expression for electric field E1 due to charge Q1 at point P. So you should know what is the distance of that point from the charge. We are writing the electric field at this point due to this charge. And the distance between the uh, between the charge and the point is R1P. That's why I will write it as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 divided by R1P whole square into R1P cap. Why I have taken this unit vector here? Because we have mentioned this a vector sum. Here these both are in vector notations. So vector notations means we have to compulsorily use the unit vector. If there is no unit vector, then this is not a this will not represent the vector notation, it will represent the magnitude of that vector only. So if we have written if we have written 
vector e, then there should be a unit vector. If we have written only web e, then we can neglect this unit vector. Okay, we have taken vector sum here. That's why we'll write it in vector notation only. See, e1 means 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 divided by r1 p whole square r1 p cap. Similarly, e2 means it will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. It is electric field due to the charge q2. And the distance of that q2 from point p is r2 p, r2 p whole square. And the unit vector will be r2 p cap. Okay, this is the unit vector now. I'm repeating, if we are writing the electric field in vector notation, then there should be a unit vector. If we are not writing in vector notation, then there is no necessity of writing this unit vector. Okay, vector notation means there should be a unit vector there. Okay. See, here 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is common. Okay, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is common. In the bracket, I will get Q1 divided by R1P whole square into R1P cap. Okay, plus Q2 divided by R2P whole square into R2P cap. Okay, so this is said to be the total electric field. This is said to be the total electric field at the point P due to the group of two charges Q1 and Q2. Okay, see this was the case of two charges only. This was the case of two charges only. It means only Q1 and Q2 were present. And at the point P we have calculated the electric field due to these two charges. If there were n charges, if there were n charges, then what will be the expression? So here I will write for for n charges, for n charges, q1, comma q2, so on qn, having position vectors, having position vectors, r1, comma r2, so on, comma rn. Okay, these are the position vectors. Okay, then what will be the expression at that time? So the electric field for n charges will be, if there were n charges, then what will be the electric field at that point? Be? Same equation we have to write, but up till the charge n we have to write. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 divided by r1p whole square r1p cap. Okay, plus q2 divided by r2p whole square r2p Cap. Okay, plus so on. We have to write nth charge electric field now. So the nth charge electric field will be Qn divided by Qn divided by Rnp whole square Rnp cap. Okay, so this will be the electric field due to group of n charges. Group of n charges. So these are the expressions for electric field due to group of two charges and electric field due to group of n charges. So we got to know by principle of superposition, electric field at any point due to group charges will be equal to vector sum of the electric field due to individual charges. Individual charges means Q1, Q2, Q3, Qn, these are the individual charges. So by adding all this vectorially, adding all these electric fields vectorially, the vector sum of all the electric fields due to individual charges will give us the total electric field at that point. This is said to be principle of superposition. Okay.